both have to really have a chance to dig into these a little bit, um, but feel free to jump into this. Um, let's take the next five minutes, roughly, and, and go in and create one yourself. We've got instructions on how to create. Um, Maybe create something for your classes that, your, that you could use next week, even. This is kind of a neat thing. Um, and if you're really um, bored with that, go ahead and try to embed things within, like, We did get dot storming whitelisted for Canvas, so now you can use that for Canvas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. But um, they were really pretty simple. It didn't take much to do it. So it hasn't taken much for me to explore too deeply into it either. Can I mainly use dot storming? And I mainly use habit? dot storming now, yeah. Um, per question. Do you ever have them sign like their names or anything? Do you always keep that anonymous? I haven't because, you know, there's always going to be some student who, um, for whatever reason, didn't get to it or whatever, so I don't want them to feel like they can't participate or be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so my focus is more on what they're doing in class with it than what they posted on it. Um, you certainly could if you wanted to. Um, I don't give students points for showing up either. It's the quality of their participation, not the quantity or the fact that they are, because Anybody can say, mm -hmm. yeah, good idea. I always find, because I use Canvas <laughs> a lot too, if the first person signs it, they all do. And if the first one doesn't, none of them do. Right. Oh. It's, it's a, the importance of modeling, right? Yes, it does. Right. Like, okay, I didn't ask, but they do the same I don't tell them that they, I don't tell them one way or the other. I just kind of let them do it. Um, And as John and I were talking earlier, that you always know who the, that one class clown is, and they're the one that's going to put in, you know, something completely silly, and that's okay too because that, at least in a language class, is a point of discussion. Um, it might be different in other yeah, other classes, sure. So I'm noticing that in the wiki itself, yeah, I cannot add. Oh, I, I was hold, able to do it. Hold up view, really? And then I can. That's interesting because I was able to do it just the other day. Let me go back. And try it again. And if this was exactly the same problem that I had when I tried to embed it in Canvas. See, when I click on it, it comes up. Interesting. Is there something about the wiki that you have not given other people access to? No, because it's all open. It's all open. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you join on the wiki page? Um, you don't have to. You shouldn't to have add to. for that storm you do. You have to like log, log in. You, even if you make up a fake name. Oh, at the very top there? Yeah, you have to do that before it allows you to say add an idea or an image. And then it opens up those options. Really? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You're talking about... Just put the name. Yeah, like you put you in whatever. Just add a name to participate. Yeah, you have to do that before you're allowed to add it. Oh, oh yeah. right, right, right. You have to have a to participate in the dot storming. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> in dot storming, you have to add your name or a name just to be able to participate. Once you've done that, yeah. Yeah. No, I did that, and it's still and good. still not doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, I just signed in as John. Yeah. Which it, it does let me add that. <laughs> Which right. is exactly the same behavior that I had on the, on the can can right. Canvas. But and then when I went to Canvas, it, it worked for me in Canvas too, because I remember when you said that. That's really weird. Oh, wait. See, it's spinning. Something, I think you're not, it's not fully loading for some reason. Do you have too much stuff running in the background? <laughs> Not to point fingers or anything, because I do the same thing. Mine is also spinning. And well, okay. on the on this page. On the wiki? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can refresh. 
Are you in what what um, browser are you using? I am in Firefox. You're in Firefox. I'm Chrome. Okay, and oh, I'm yeah, in Chrome. Moved over to Chrome or Firefox from Chrome. It wasn't working for me in Chrome. Mm -hmm. um, so out of curiosity, what have been the pros and cons from your students' perspective using these various platforms? Um. Pros, they really like the fact that they're getting to talk about what they want to talk about. <laughs> that's, that's the big thing, you know. Students like to talk about themselves and what they know and, and all of that. Right, exactly. And so from that, I think they really, that's, that's the biggest pro. Cons, you know, there's always somebody who couldn't get it to work, for example. Not to point fingers or anything, John, but um <laughs> um you know, there's always and that's why that's another reason why I don't like give them a grade for participating in putting something up. Um, as long as I get enough, that usually holds the conversation. Other than that, you know, I haven't really they haven't complained. But I, I use these kinds of things from the beginning, so it kind of becomes part of their, ex you know, this is what I'm doing in my class. And I guess it may be context specific to a language class. Um, there's probably not too much, I think I can talk about in terms of controversial topics or discussion points that you Right, so that's where, like the Tricider, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about what do you do about the student who, um, uh, like is bullying mm -hmm. on there. So first off, because I'm the administrator, I can delete anything that I want oh. that's up there. I have Nobody to totally bullied Dan's thought on dry cider. <laughs> <laughs> so I can always delete them. Um, I set up expectations at the beginning of my classes where I'm saying, you know, we're gonna be using a lot of, um, it's a language class, we're gonna be using a lot of technology tools, um, and in order to be able to continue to use those tools, we need to build relationships in here and be kind to each other. And I teach them uh, also about um, creative or constructive commenting. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and I model it also. I don't ever just put good job on top of a piece of paper that I'm returning to them or a test because that doesn't give them any real feedback. So I, I model that all the time about constructive comments to help each other. Um, I've never with college students had any issues of bullying in this. Now I know that they go on YouTube or whatever other social media and they slam people all the time, but they don't do it in my class. <laughs> and they also know that if they do start doing it in my class, then we stop doing these things and they really like doing them. So they just, um, now if I were dealing with high school or middle school kids, it might be totally different, but at least at the college level, I haven't had any issues. Uh, you, do you use in languages? Yeah. Yes. And then um, any level? Any or, level. Um, best for vocabulary, grammar? Anything. anything, really anything. And you know, you can design them where you um, want them to use a certain structure just by saying, tell me what you did last weekend. Well, then they're forced to say it in you know past tense, um, that sort of thing. So yeah, you just design your questions to get them to use the structures that you want them to use, um, and they like I said, they like to talk about themselves. They like to talk about what they're thinking. And they're, so even showing them a video and asking them you know to react to it, that's still personal too enough that um, that they feel connected to what they're saying. Um, and it, it's really enlivened the discussion in class yeah. quite a bit over my forcing them to, you know, use these prompts and A and B sheets that I've created or that came with the textbook or whatever. Personal reaction things allow them to tap into the, their prior experience and share that, which we love to do. And that's, if we are able to get our students to connect the current topic with their personal experiences, then all of a sudden, you know, their, their experiences are meaningful, now they're connected to this, this content, so the content becomes more meaningful. That's kind of... Something I haven't done yet, but I'm starting to think about it, especially, I mean, like, this is off the top of my head right now, is lifting some of these kinds of questions and putting them on a test. So that they've already practiced with yeah. it, yes. 
maybe their view, you know, like the video one, maybe their view has changed now that they've seen what other people wrote and it's all familiar to them and see what they, you know, expand on it or say about it. Yeah. Um, and then of course the grading would be on how they wrote it. The right, language, it's not, not, the, not the content as much as, yeah, how, you know, how well did they formulate their ideas in the target language in my case. Um, but I, I could see in other disciplines uh, especially with this voting feature and stuff that then leads to further discussion which may start to change their thinking or whatever that their thinking might have evolved and they might have more to say at the end of a unit on something yeah. um, and to be able to see the point of view of the right yeah. right um, so I, I'm a big believer in test how you teach so to at, to re-ask those same questions in a in a form, formal, more summative exam situation, um, might be. I should try it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, do you have, and does anybody see any good uses for this? Anything specific that they can think of in a course that they're working on? Working. Or in somebody else's course? Yeah. I teach Japanese. Mm -hmm. Currently, I teach at the very elementary level, but mm -hmm. I see like the pros of this type of um, platform or technology, especially if you're teaching at a first level. As I said, like they may need certain readings, or they may need to write a paragraph mm -hmm. or something and as a starter, or just to see like what's others' perspective, mm -hmm. because we can collect everybody's um, idea Ideas on one, one platform. Life it is easy to, you know, I guess, see and learn how to frame your idea in the target language. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, the student didn't have idea, but like looking at others' way of talking about it, right. then it prompts them to say something a little harder than what they can do mm -hmm. by themselves and stuff like that. But for elementary level, like, so you gave us the example of like, Tell me about what you do in your weekends or you know, mm -hmm. this past summer or whatever. I mean, we do that in the classroom as well, mm -hmm. pretty much. So, for you in Japanese, because they can say more than they can write at the beginning, like they have to work up to being able to do the characters not and typing. In this, not in this school. Oh, okay. So they can they can type in in Japanese as quickly as they can speak it. Pretty much. Really? Okay. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, typically, it, it's the other way where they it takes them a little bit to, to be able to type because they have to you know. Um, but it, it regardless um, to even just have them put a picture up there, and you could have conversations about the pictures where they're just describing what they see. You know, and it could be as simple as the colors they see, or you know, if that's what you're working on. Or you could create one that has different things on it that you want them to talk about. Um, so I think that it could be used at the even elementary level um, with them putting in pictures, even if they're not typing a sentence about it, they could just add an image of some kind, and maybe you'd be doing Padlet instead of um, dot storming, maybe there's not something to vote on necessarily. Right. So that goes back to pick the right tool for the right task. If you're not in a situation where they need to vote, Padlet works perfectly well. Um, Is there any um, software like this that you can actually organize people's posts? Where you push them to the top kind of thing? Or like, I don't know, put like similar posting next to each other or I don't know. Okay. Whatever the way yeah, so So I think you can move Padlet posts around. Padlet also when you set it up, you have you have choices of what you want it to look like in terms of like, do you want it to stream like this? Do you want them all over the place? Do you want them in bot? You know, like, so you pick the way that you want it to look. Um, and that might help you organizing. Um, and in that case, too, if you have them do it, maybe not the night before, but two nights before you want to use it, um, that would give you the time you need to move right. things around to where you want them and then bring it back to, into class. 
Um, I wish there were a way you could like, you know, um, do columns like favorite things, least favorite things, and then they put them up there. The only way I've ever done that is to make two separate ones. That's where I'm rearranging based on votes and mm -hmm. number of comments. Right. That's right. Yeah. So that's why I was trying to figure out where she was going. Yeah. So that one will be based on. But I think I told it that I wanted it to organize oh, okay. that way. Yeah. Yeah. When um, I do my padlets, I'm some some move them way up and way down, and I move them around all the time. But I wish right. it would automatically fill the, fill the space. Right. <laughs> so um, with Padlet, I've done like two separate ones. My favorite things and my least favorite things it would just be an example where I did. You know, and so we pull up the one Padlet that's all their favorite right. things, and then you pull up the other Padlet that's their I mean, least favorite the thing things. Thing about doing these kind of thing for like a part of the discussion in the classroom is like you know they can think about it before, before they come. Just starting right. that, starting that in the classroom. But I mean, in the classroom, we always do like okay, so the agreement and disagreement and like that neutral type of idea, and we just put right. it like we categorize them while right. writing them down. While they're writing so them, I was wondering. Something like that. Right. Um, part of what led me to this was because I wasn't getting to those conversation parts soon enough. It's like that was at the end of my lesson, yeah. and I never got to it because we were so busy on this other part. And I really wanted to get to the, because that's where they really needed my support more than, um, you know, taking their. If I, if I was spending all my time just getting their ideas, I never got to talk about them, but if I could get their ideas ahead of time, then I had the talk time. Um, and it, I gained class time by doing this. Kind of like flip lesson ideas, um, to be able to do that. Piece where they don't need my support ahead. I was focused in, in something if they are practicing. Uh, right. Yeah, you, right. you go to the correct point in the correct in the, Right. I think this is the point you want. Mm -hmm. Great for guided instruction as well, because I could totally see using this to like teach in my discipline, teach students how to read primary literature, because I can cut out all the figures and post them on a board here and kind of teach them how to walk how to read something. Yeah, in order and exactly. Which is part of doing person or like teach them before they get to class how to read something. And kind of That's give them an online online guided instruction of how you want them to how do you something mm -hmm. and then be able to hit the ground running in class as well. Right, right. So that procedural approach they could get ahead of time. That's a that's a great idea. Using it for case studies and problem solving could be a good strategy too, mm -hmm. especially if it were like after class, collaborative, like here, follow this link, read this case study, watch this video. What would you do? Right. And you got that up down vote right on the tri or one specifically. Right, and with the the idea of, of a video, for example, that they would have to watch and then comment on, mm -hmm. to be able to have them watching that video outside of class, you know, I don't need to be standing in the room while they're watching a video. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's in a sense unproductive time, right? Um, and then they they come in thinking about it, and there's always the student who didn't watch. You know, or didn't do it. But you have that same student right now, the one who never does their work. Or something came up and they just didn't get to it. And that's okay because there's enough other stuff from their classmates that they can build off of and start to formulate their ideas. So, anyway. Help me thank Laura. And thank you for filling out the um, evaluations. They help us. Um, and if any of you start using these, I'd love to know what you do. Yeah. Because that'll build on my ideas too, like using it as a test. Right. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Next week we've got John Holland back coming in to talk about how he uses um, soft chalk to make e documents like e tennises. So that'll be kind of an interesting one. I don't know much about soft chalk at all, so I can't talk about it at all. And thank you very much. Thanks for coming.